biology is always a big inspiration for engineers. There are many things we can learn from nature. Looking at an octopus, the way it moves its body, the way it would grasp an object, it's very interesting to see. We followed it for a while, sort of forgot what we were doing for a minute. Those behavioral observations are very valuable in this just documenting this really rare species in the middle of this giant protected area. Just, it continues to build evidence for the value of this really precious resource. As you become more familiar with an area, you can kind of decide like, okay, yeah, we definitely haven't seen that in these six dives that we've done in this general area, so we, we should collect that. try this. It's just in a very precarious place. It's been reported as being a new genus, so this could be something really new. What? They're on it. Right there, right there, right there. They're on them. Did you get it? I think you got it. Stop the bottom. Put them down in the box. Suction and close the lid quickly. He's in there. It's in there. We just got eggs. Good job. Oh, way to go. Good directing. That's unbelievable. Nice job, Cody. Samples are absolutely critical for what we're trying to do. The questions we're trying to answer here about the evolution of life in the deep sea, the evolution of life in this area, plays into the larger role of how communities shift and change with climate and with protection. You start a trip with an empty box and a lot of hope and really no idea what you're going to find. And then dive by dive, the box starts to fill up. The ROV pilots, the scientists, everybody is working together to be able to identify samples, to collect them and bring them up safely so that we can study them and learn something about them. Sometimes when I speak with biologists, they tell me that they see something they're interested in, but they don't even try picking it up. They know that it's not going to work the manipulator is going to crush it. Uh, you know what, this is too much. No. No. We're going to leave it. Daniel Bode got a chance to try his squishy fingers in situ, right in the deep sea. Well done. Awesome work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nicely done. There you go. Soft robotics is a field where we try to expand uh, the materials that we are using, and they are extremely soft. You can compare that to a rubber band or even to uh, gummy bears. And this allows to grasp things that we wouldn't be able to grasp with a hard-bodied manipulator. Oh, oh yeah, he's there we got go. him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that I've seen them in action, there are more and more things that come up that we're trying to collect that seem to fit that very well. These other samples are critically important and they're put into liquid nitrogen and ethanol and they're stored in RNA later and they're going to have transcriptomics and genetics and you know population genetics and maybe in some cases even genomics performed on them. A lot of medical researchers who study marine bacteria are actually looking for different structures that can interact with our immune systems in different ways that could be beneficial. A lot of what my project is based on is wound healing. We've seen sea stars that are eating in the corals that are predatory. I can actually isolate the wounded tissue and separate it from intact tissue to hopefully be able to determine what kind of patterns and recognition of microbes these animals use to regenerate over time. Modern day discovery may not be as romantic um, as people might have in their heads, but what it is, is efficient, fast, and amazing. The idea that you can go from knowing literally nothing to then making a map, taking a bunch of water samples, putting a bunch of sensors in the water, getting visuals down there, getting animals in your hands, preserving them so that we can look at them in every possible way with every possible tool available is just incredible, priceless, and that's what these samples are. If you asked me to put a price on them, I, I couldn't. Thank you.